Good morning, everyone. Oh, well, actually, good afternoon. Uh, this is Cynthia Guazda, Community Services Librarian here at Hageman Library, coming to you live with uh, a new, uh, some new uh, books that I'd like to review with you. Um, they're available here at the library this this month. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to talk with you about those. Okay, so new and featured fiction for June 2023 at Hageman Memorial Library. Okay. Okay, so the first book I'd like to um, talk to you about is called is called The Keeper of Stories, and that is by Sally Page. She can't recall what started her collection. Maybe it was in a fragment of conversation overheard as she cleaned a sink. Before long, as she dusted a sitting room or defrosted a fridge, she noticed people were telling her their stories. Perhaps they had always done so, but now it is different. Now the stories are reaching out to her and she gathers them to her. Cleaner Janice knows that it is in people's stories that you really get to know them. From recently widowed Fiona and her son Adam to opera singing Giordi, the quiet bus driver Ewan, and the pretentious Mrs. Yeah, 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 and her fox terrier, and her fox terrier uh, Decius, Janice has a unique insight into the community around her. When Janice starts cleaning for Mrs. B, a shrewd and prickly woman in her 90s, she finally meets someone who wants to hear her story. But Janice is clear. She is the keeper of stories. She doesn't have a story to tell, at least not, not one she can share. Mrs. B is no fool and knows there's more to Janice than meets the eye. What is she hiding? After all, doesn't everyone have a story to tell? That's the keeper of stories by Sally Page. And the next book I'd like to talk to you about is called Late Bloomers by Deepa Veradarajan. After 36 years of a dutiful but unhappy arranged marriage, recently divorced Suresh and Lada Raman find themselves, themselves starting new paths in life. Suresh is trying to navigate the world of online dating on a website that caters to Indians and is striking out at every turn until he meets a mysterious, devastatingly attractive younger woman who seems to be smitten with him. Lada is enjoying her newfound independence, but she's caught off guard when a professor in his early 60s starts to flirt with her. Meanwhile, Suresh and Lada's daughter Priya think her father's online pursuits are distasteful, even as she embarks upon a clandestine affair of her own. And their son, Nikesh, pretends at, a, pretends at a seemingly perfect marriage with his law, with his law firm colleague and their, young son, and their young son. But he hides the truth of what his relationship really entails. Over the course of three weeks in August, the whole family will uncover one another's secrets, confront the limits of love and loyalty, and explore life's second chances. Charming, funny, and moving, Late Bloomers in, introduces a delightful new voice in fiction with a story of four individuals trying to understand how to be happy in their own lives and as a family. The next book is um, American Mermaid by Julia Langbean. Broke English teacher Penelope Sheleman is as surprised as anyone when her feminist novel, American Mermaid, becomes a bestseller. Bored by the promise of a big payday, she quits teaching and moves to LA to 
and turn the novel into an action flick with the help of some studio hacks. But as she's pressured to change her main character from a fierce androgynous eco warrior to a teen sex object in a clamshell bra, strange things start to happen. Threats appear in the screenplay. Siren calls Laura Penelope's co-writers into danger. Is Penelope losing her mind or has her mermaid come to life and acting revenge for Hollywood's violations? American Mermaid follows a young woman braving the casual slights and cruel calculations of a ruthless industry town where she discovers a beating heart in her own fiction a mermaid who will fight to move between worlds without giving up her voice a hilarious story about deep things american mermaid asks how far we'll go to protect the parts of ourselves that are not for sale that's american mermaid by julia langbean the next book is called happy place by emily henry harriet and Wynn have been the perfect couple since they met in college. They go together like salt and pepper, honey and tea, lobster and rolls. Except now, for reasons they're still not discussing, they, they don't. They, they broke up five months ago and still haven't told their best friends, which is how they find themselves sharing a bedroom at the main cottage that has been their friend group, friend group's early, excuse me, friend group's yearly getaway for the last decade. Their annual respite from the world where one vibrant, blissful week they leave behind their daily lives, have copious amounts of cheese, wine, and seafood, and soak up the salty coastal air with the people who understand the most. Only this year, Harriet and Wynne are, li are lying through their teeth while trying not to notice how desperately they still want each other. Because the cottage is for sale and this is the last week they'll all have together in this place. They can't stand to break their friends' hearts, and so they'll play their parts. Harriet will be the driven, surgical resident who never starts a fight, and Wynn will be the laid-back charmer who never lets the cracks show. It's a flawless plan, if you look at it from a, a great distance and through a pair of sunscreen-smeared sunglasses. After years of being in love, how hard can it be to fake it for one week in front of those who know you best? It's called Happy Place by Emily Henry, and this title is available in the library's large print collection. The next book is called The Mostly True Story of Tanner and Louise by Colleen Oakley. 21-year-old Tanner Quimby needs a place to live, preferably one where she can continue sitting around in sweatpants and playing video games 19 hours a day. Since she has no credit or money to speak of, her options are limited. So when an opportunity to work as a live-in caregiver for an elderly woman falls into her lap, she takes it. One slip on the rug, that's all it took for Louise Wilt's daughter to demand that Louise have a full-time nanny living with her. Never mind that she can still walk fine, finish her daily crossword puzzle, and pour the two fingers of vodka she drinks every afternoon. Bottom line, Louise wants a caretaker even less than Tanner wants to be one. The two started off their living arrangement happily ignoring each other until Tanner starts to notice things, weird things. Like why does Louise keep her garden shed locked up tighter than a prison? And why is the local news fixated on the suspect of one of the biggest jewelry heists in American history who looks eerily like Louise? And why does Louise suddenly appear in her room with a packed bag at 1 a.m. insisting that they leave town immediately? Thus begins the story of a not-to-be-underestimated elderly woman and an aimless young woman who, if they can outrun the mistakes of their past, might just have the greatest adventure of their lives. That's called The Mostly True Story of Tanner and Louise, and that's by Colleen Oakley. The next book is called The Reunion by Kayla Olson. Liv Latimer grew up on TV. As the star of the popular teen drama Girl on the Verge, Liv spent her adolescence on the screen trying to be as picture perfect as her character in real life. But after the death of her father and the betrayal of her on-screen love interest and off-screen best friend Ransom Joel, Liv wanted nothing more than to retreat, living a mostly normal life aside from a few indie film roles. But now, 20 years after the show's premiere, the cast is invited back for a reunion special, financed 
by a major streaming service. Liv is happy to be back on set, especially once she discovers Ransom has only improved with age, and their chemistry is certainly still intact. They quickly fall into their old rhythms, rediscovering what had drawn them together decades before. But with new rivalries among the cast emerging and the specter of a reboot shadowing their shoot, Liv questions whether returning to the past is what she needs to finally get her own happy ending. That's called The Reunion by Kayla Olson. The next book is called The Last Beekeeper by Julia Carrick Dalton. Excuse me, Julie Carrick Dalton. It's been more than a decade since the world has come undone, and Sasha Severn has returned to her childhood home with one goal in mind. Find the mythic research her father, the infamous last be beekeeper, hid before he was incarcerated. There, Sasha is confronted with a group of squatters who have claimed the quiet, idyllic farm as their own. While she initially feels threatened, the group soon becomes her newfound family, offering what she hasn't felt since her father was in prison, security and hope. Maybe it's time to forget the family secrets buried on the farm and focus on her future. But just as she settles into her new life, Sasha witnesses the impossible. She sees a honeybee, presumed extinct. People who claim to see bees are ridiculed in silence for reasons Sasha doesn't understand. But she can't shake the feeling that this impossible bee is connected to her father's missing research. Fighting to uncover the truth could shatter Sasha's fragile security and threaten the lives of her new found family. Or could it save them all? Julie Carrick Dalton's The Last Beekeeper is a celebration of found family, an exploration of truth versus power, and a triumph of hope in the face of despair. It is a me meditation on forgiveness and redemption and a reminder to cherish the beauty that still exists in this fragile world. That's called The Last Beekeeper by Julie Carrick Dalton. And that finishes our book talk for today. Um, and so thank you for tuning in. And please follow the Hageman Memorial Library online for more recommendations and library goodness. Our handles on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter are at Hageman Library. Instagram is at Hageman underscore East Haven. Uh, please let us know in the comments uh, what's major to be read list and what you're currently reading. And you can also put any of these books on hold by calling the library at 203-468-3890. Or you can go on our website at www.hagemanlibraryoneword.org and click on my account and you can log in with your library card um, and search for the books and place them uh, on hold um, on your card. So please, uh, please do so and uh, please visit us soon and we look forward to seeing you and have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Thank you very much.